Okay, so here we're gonna do those three steps to graphing the polynomial. So the first step is to find the real zeros. Well, in order for me to find the real zeros of this thing, I would have to have it in factored form. Now this one doesn't necessarily look like I can factor it. Let me pause the video here and grab one that can be factored, one that's more similar to what you're gonna see in your homework because there are some pieces of information that we are missing here um, because this course I have told you is not the full version of the course. So I think I need to change this number here, but let me go um, verify in the homework really quick. Okay, yes, I have verified it. And so we are gonna change this 11 into a four, okay? And then you should be able to um, do this problem. So whenever I have four terms, the only way for me to factor this is to group it. And so then this half has x squared in common, which leaves me with two x plus three. I do have to use that minus sign and this side, 4 and 6, can both be divided by 2. So negative 4x divided by negative 2 is a positive 2x, and negative 6 divided by negative 2 is a positive 3. So I end up with this common factor, and if I took that out, I would have x squared minus 2. Now, if I set this equal to 0, um, Actually, this is a really bad problem. Um, let me give you one more that more of like what you would see in your homework section. So let me go back and let me just grab one real quick so you can see. Because I don't think they're gonna, if they do give you a square here, they're gonna give you a perfect square, not a two. Ah, uh, yes. So let's see if we had something like. Um, 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 8x minus Okay, let's see something like this. So here, if we group this, we're gonna get two x squared, and then that would leave me with x, and that would leave me with, oh yeah, this needs to be an eight. This is what happens when you try to make up your own problems on the spot, right? Um, then over here, minus, oh gosh, this is not working out for me, okay. Let's change it into that. There we go. Start over. I'm trying to figure out one that's going to look like one that you have in your homework. So there, if I go with that, that should work. So this half actually has x squared in common, which would leave me with x um, plus 4. And then here, if I factor out a minus and a 4, I end up with x plus 4, and then if I factor out the x plus 4 they have in common, I would have an x squared minus 4. And an x squared minus 4 can be factored into x plus 2 and x minus 2. So I have three different terms here, right? So they're all the multiplicities are going to be 1, okay? So that means... Um, if I were to set this one equal to 0, I would get x equals to negative 4. If I set that equal to 0, I would get x equals to negative 2. And if I set that one equal to 0, I get positive 2. So 
Um, those are the x-intercepts, and we know because of the multiplicity, it's going to cross through this one, cross through this one, and cross through that one. Now, um, for the f of 0, let's plug in 0 into the function. So I'm not using this function, I'm using this one. It would be 0 cubed plus 4 times 0 squared minus 4 times 0 minus 16. So you end up with negative 16 as your y-intercept. And so then now the in behavior, since my biggest uh, exponent is x cubed, I have a positive 1 x cubed, which means it should be going like a positive odd, which is this manner, okay? So let's see, I've already done step one was actually this. This was step one. This was step two. And then I um, talked about the multiplicity and the in behavior. Um, so really I'm on step three, which is putting everything together and graphing it. Um, I believe they might have the graph paper on the next page, yeah. So let's go ahead and do that. So here I'm going to plot the points that I have. Now I do have a negative 16 and this thing does not go all the way down to negative 16. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I actually have a y-intercept all the way down there. Then I have an x-intercept of negative 4. I have an x-intercept of negative 2. And I have an x-intercept of positive 2. I do know the end behavior, so I know this side will go up, I know this side will go down. I do know that I'm going to have to hit that um, this guy here, so it's probably going to do something like this, which means even though that's going to go up, I have to make sure that the graph looks smooth, right? So it'll probably do something like that. I mean, I wish I could draw a little bit prettier, but I can't. And then I do have to come back up here. So it'll probably look something like that. And then this is where it says extra selected points if necessary, because I know I'm going to have to come up and go back down because I've got to cross through this and cross through that. But how high up do I go? I have no idea. So let's plug in negative three and see how high that goes up. So let's see, um, negative 3 to the power 3, um, and then plus 4, 3 squared, negative 3 squared, and then minus 16, oh, nope, minus 4 times negative 3, and then minus 16, and so I get 5. So should go all the way up to 5. And that helps a lot because then I know that this will go so probably I know it needs to go downward but it's not going to look like that at that angle. It's going to go downward like this. Okay and you only have two turning points which makes sense because this is an x cubed function right? And you can only have at most two, and I only have is two turning points. So that's what the graph looks like. Now when you're drawing it by hand, it's a little bit harder to connect everything. Um, but in my math lab, you're basically going to be selecting an image among other images, or you're going to have to be putting these points here, this point and this point, and then just hitting the graphing function. Um, it normally does it for you automatically. Okay. So that's one example. Now what happens, this is actually an easier example if they have it factored for you already, okay? So the other one was tough because we had to factor it. This one it's already factored. So if I set this factor equal to zero, I get negative two. And if I set x minus one equal to zero, I get x equal to positive one. Now. Notice that this one has a multiplicity of 3, which means it's going to wiggle at that x-intercept. This one has a multiplicity of 2, which means it's going to 
bounce off of that x-intercept, okay? Step two is to find the y-intercept, which means I plug in zero for x. So I get two cubed times negative one squared, which is eight times one, which is just eight. I already know that 0 and 8 is going to be my y-intercept. And then step 3 asks me to do the end behavior and all of that. Let me go back here to discuss the end behavior so that I can see the polynomial. Notice, if you multiply all of this out, you're going to get an x cubed and then a bunch of terms, right? If you multiply this one out, you're going to get an x squared and then a bunch of terms. And if you multiply these out, you're going to get an x to the fifth, and again, with a whole bunch of other terms, okay? So really, when it's in its factored form, you just really need to add all the multiplicities together for all the, the factors that have an x, okay? And so you get an x to the fifth. And notice that the number in front here is a positive 1. So I'm going to have a positive 1 x to the fifth as my leading term. That is a positive x to the odd, which means my end behavior should be looking like this again. Okay, so let's put that information together to get the graph, and we'll see if we need any extra points. So I'm gonna first graph my um, y-intercept, zero and eight is right here. Then I'm going to graph my x-intercepts, which are negative two, and positive one. And um, I know I have to bounce off of this one. So even though I'm up here, and I know I'm gonna have to go up on the right, it's going to come down here and it's gonna bounce off of that and go up. And this one has to go through there, but it's gonna wiggle there. So it's not gonna bounce, it's gonna go through it, but it's gonna wiggle. So basically what it's gonna do is it's going to do this and then it's gonna change and so you see how it wiggles in there it goes it's kind of going like a bowl up here but then like a hill down there so that's the little wiggle and how many turning points do I have I only have one two turning points even though it's an x to the fifth I only had two turning points and that's okay the most I could have had was four doesn't mean I have to have four. Okay, so that is that example. So now you've got a couple of examples on how to graph the polynomial if the function is given. Now just remember that a c is zero, right? Same thing as an x-intercept, which is the same thing as a solution of setting it equal to zero, and it's the same thing as a factor. You've heard me in this last couple of problems um, when it was written like this, I said this is a factor, I said um, x equal to 2 was a 0 or an x-intercept, right? So I was using all of these, and then how was I finding the x-intercepts? I was setting them equal to 0, right? So all that information just coincides with one another. Now I did notice that in my math labs they ask you another kind of question, and that is they give you the graph, and then they're asking you to tell them what the polynomial will look like, okay? So the first thing you need to know when you're trying to find the polynomial is that it will have a coefficient, um, and you're probably gonna have to find that coefficient, okay? And you also have the x-intercepts. So when you do the x-intercepts, remember, if this is one, two, three, four, if x equals negative four, and you add four to both sides, it's actually x plus four that was set equal to zero, which means it's x plus four that was the factor. And notice that it crosses through that, so the multiplicity here should be one, which means my exponent should be one. Now if I move on to the next x-intercept, that's x equals two, and if I minus two on both sides to get it equal to zero, that means the factor x minus 2 would have had to have been the factor I set equal to 0. And what is the multiplicity here? The multiplicity here is it's going through it, so it's 1 again. And then I'm here now. This is x equal to 5. And then if I minus 5 over, that means x minus 5 is the factor. 
And again, it goes through there, so the multiplicity is one. So notice that whatever my x-intercepts are, the factors have the opposite sign, right? And that's exactly what it was saying over here in this box, was that if this is a zero, then x minus that is the factor. So use the opposite sign. So if it's a negative x-intercept, use plus. And if it's a positive x-intercept, you use minus. But I don't know what this number should be. So I'm going to use the extra point they gave me, the y-intercept, to figure that out. So I know that the y value should be 20 when the x value is 0. And so I have 4 times negative 2 times negative 5, which gives me negative 20, positive 40. And if I want to solve for a, since that's multiplied, I need to divide by 40 on both sides. So I get 1 half equals a. So now I know what the whole polynomial looks like. I have this 1 half, and then I have x plus 4. You don't have to write a 1 multiplicity. It's already understood if you don't write anything. If it's squared, you have to write the square, right? And so this is the polynomial that I needed to find. Now I have a couple more because we have some different scenarios happening here. So notice here, again, I'm going to have a polynomial with some coefficient I don't know yet. And then this x-intercept is at negative 5. So here I'm going to have x plus 5. And it does go through, which means my multiplicity should be 1. And here my x-intercept is positive 3, which means the factor will be x minus 3. And here it bounces, so that means my exponent should be 2. But I still don't know what this number is, so I'm going to use this y value 9, and that happens at the x value of 0, to figure out what that a should be. So that would be 9, um, so I get a times 45. If I divide by 45, I get 1 fifth should equal a. So then in this case, my polynomial is going to be 1 fifth times x plus 5 times x minus 3 squared. So the ones I don't have to write, the squares I do have to write. Now let's try this other one. Okay, so we end up with this one, but notice it wiggles. It goes like a bowl on this side and like a hill on that side. And the same thing here, a bowl on this side and a hill on that side. So it's wiggling there. So I don't know what my coefficient is, but I have x negative 1, so this will be positive 1, and x plus 1, or x positive 1, so I'll have minus 1. And because it wiggles, the exponent here will be a 3, and because it wiggles there, the exponent for that factor will be 3. And then I have this value here. So that y value is negative 1, corresponding to the x value of 0. So I get 1 cubed and negative 1 cubed, which is 1 and negative 1. It's just negative 1. And if I divide both sides by negative 1, I get positive 1 for a. So my polynomial is just going to be a positive 1, x plus 1 cubed, and x minus 1 cubed. And you don't have to write the 1 coefficient. If you don't write anything, it's automatically assumed to be a positive 1. So that is the polynomial that they were looking for there. Okay, so it should be enough to work on um, those examples. And that is the end of 3.4.